All right, Shalom, Makim, Shalom. Hey, Yah Bashim El Shai, Barak Thumb. Before I start, though, I want to give all praises to the Creator of the heavens and the earth, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim Harakak Wadash, Devon, say the elder apostles of the Great Millstone. All right, welcome back to another GMS Inspiration of the Almighty. And um, as you can see, the title What time we are afraid, we would trust in Yahweh while Yahweh Shai. As this end day approach, you know, things are going to get more frightening. But as things get more frightening, it's going to be up to us to further, <clears throat> to further believe in Yahweh by Yahweh Shai. Now, when I had woke up this morning, I was already like just in a spirit from um, the moment that I woke up. So I, I went straight into my prayers and I was in the midst of praying and um and this title came to my head and this whole little lesson came to my head because I was speaking to the Heavenly Father. Like, Lord, you know, I'm looking at the times and uh, it just get more frightening. Please be with me, you know, be with me, be with my family, be with my brethren. You know, it's getting very um, um, it's getting very frightening seeing how. The, the the Edomites kingdom is falling. It's gonna affect um all of us. So I'm praying to the Heavenly Father about you know just uh trusting in him, him showing him showing himself to me that he's with me, you know, those different things that we do, and this whole lesson came to my head, all right, and definitely brothers. And uh, you little amount of sisters out there, we're going to have to trust in the Lord. We're going to truly have to trust in the Lord when there's no food out here. When um, people basically basically scavenging, scavenging around with their guns, killing each other. There's no water when you cut on the water from the sink. You know what I'm saying? Um, your food getting low. It, it just everything. You know, you, you're scared somebody's going to invade your house. You got children. We truly going to have to believe in Yahweh Shem El Shai. And I strongly believe Yahweh Shem El Shai going to be there with us. Matter of fact, the title of this lesson comes from Psalms 56 and 3. It says, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. And that was our, uh, that was the king, King David that spoke that. He said what time he was afraid, he was going to trust in Yahweh Shem El Shai. So as we see these, we see this society collapsing right before our eyes and you getting infected every day. Food prices going up. You know, it's getting harder to live. You pretty, you pretty much stuck where you at because the price of living then went up. You know what I mean? Food costing more and when you go to the store, you're getting less food. And you're like, damn, you know. And the flesh should be like, oh, getting all scared about it. and But nah, man. King David said, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. We pray to Yahweh Shem El Shai, we get closer to the Lord. Because that's all we have. And remember, King David was afraid plenty of times. He was afraid plenty of times. You know? But he wrote this down for us today. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. So we're going to believe in Yahweh Shem El Shai that he will perform miracles. He's going to help our children. A lot of us got children, yo. You're thinking about, uh, I'm going to just run and I, I could just be on a run and I could just do this and do that. Not when you have children, bro. You know what I mean? A lot of us got different scenarios. A lot of us have ailments. They can't really run because the knee is messed up. They're back. You know, they're very sickly. They're older. Some A lot of us were older. You know, a lot of us is we don't have experience in life. We're younger. But that's why none of that matters when it comes to Yahweh Shem El Shai. None of that matters. It don't matter if you're sick, you young, you old, you're you're dealing with this problem, that problem, got children. It don't matter what what it is, the Lord could deliver you, and that's what we trust in. So as I kept on just meditating, um, it led me to this scripture. Matthew 24 and 21, it says, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, 
nor ever shall be. So, yes, we enter into a time that how could you prepare for a day like never before? You never even it said in the scripture that such as was not since the beginning of the world. So. All the most worst atrocities that took place on the, on the planet, this day is going to top that. How could you prepare for such a day that you don't even know what it's really going to bring? How you prepare for that? Truly, the only way you could prepare is getting close to the to to the one that's bringing the day like never before, which is the Creator of the heavens and the earth, Yahweh, by Hashem You gotta get you gotta get right with the Creator again. And the prophecies already then told us that we're not gonna be um, um, just like the Christians would say, raptured up. And, and watching everybody go through tribulation. No, we're going to be in the midst of the tribulation. But that's where the Lord, the God of the, of the heavens and the earth, that's where he's going to work his magic and his miracles. That's when he's going to establish himself to be the Lord of mercy. The God of, 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 of mercy. You know, mighty to save. That's when he's going to glorify himself when he's delivering all brethren, all sisters, all the elect out of crazy situations. He's going to glorify himself. So the day like never before, nor there ever shall be, there's not going to be a time after it that's going to be like on to this day. And the people going to be through, just like you see in this picture, done. Once upon a time, they were doing their makeup on TikTok and talking crap over social media. And now they're looking like a, a a third world country bum running down the street with the same clothes on, screaming and catching hell. People dead here and there and robots and people getting microchipped up and people starved to death, dead bodies. You know, it's going to be a crazy day. It's going to be frightening, too. It ain't going to be like we just going to be out here tough guys and just no, man, we're going to be the scripture talk about the righteous should be scarcely saved. We're going to be seeing things that's going to just be like, whoa, but we're going to have to keep moving and the Lord going to be with us. You see. Let's go right here to second edges two and twenty seven. It says, be not weary for when a day of trouble and heaviness cometh. Others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou should be merry and have abundance. That's what the Lord told us. And that's what we banking on. If that's what the Lord said, that's what I believe. The scripture said, be not weary. You know, so we got to fight against the way the flesh tries to tell you, like, you know, the Lord ain't going to save you or you ain't, you ain't strong enough to get through this or, hey, man, you got too many children or. Hey, man, you sick, man. Or you ain't going to be able to do nothing. Something's wrong with you. You know, those different uh, contrary thoughts. The scripture say, be not weary. We're going to fight against that. We have to. We have to. Ain't no other choice. But it said when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, when that day come, when it's going to be crazy as hell out here, people going to be sorrow, full of sorrow and weeping. But we're going to have Mary and have abundance. The Lord going to have it to some. He going to have it somehow. We're going to be like good in the, in the midst of some the day like never before. We're going to be good. How it will happen. We have to wait and see. We have to wait and see. It says the heathen shall envy thee, but shall not be able to do nothing against thee, saith the Lord. My hands shall cover thee so that thy children should not see hell. Be joyful, O thou mother, with thy children, for I will deliver thee, saith the Lord. There we go. Do you see that? It says the heathen, you know, Esau with his with his micro C hip, these troops with all their different type of transhumanism and technology, they're going to try to use to subject the world. They going to envy us, but not be able to do nothing against us. The Lord going to have his angels protecting us. The Lord going to have certain men with power. The Lord going to have us hide it out. Who knows? But it says, my hand will cover thee night so that thy children should not see hell. Our, the scripture said our children 
and we're going to be, it, they're not going to be up in the, the ships delivered and traumatized. You know, you got a lot of children, they didn't went through some trauma and they traumatized up to when they grown. The Lord said, your children should not see hell. Hell means a bad time. So the Lord going to have it to where somehow uh, our children ain't going to be affected. He going to cover us. The angels going to be with us. And that's what we believe. And then it said, you mothers out there with thy children, rejoice, be joyful. Because the Lord going to deliver you. You believe in Abashim Yahushua, you got children. The Lord going to have something happen for you. Whether it be the, I don't know how the Lord going to do it. You know, have a man of the Lord come swoop you up. Who knows, man? But since you, since you and the, and the rest of the, the elect dedicated themselves to Yahweh Shem El Shai, we promise to be covered. Because it's coming. Second Ezra 16 and 68 says, For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you and feed you being idle. With things offered unto idol. We know that they're coming. That's that grain. The burning wrath of a great multitude is those UN troops and all the technology they're coming to try to subject the world, the people. This is a global move. So they're going to be trying to subject the world using these this technology. Throwing people in concentration camps, registering people. It says, and they that consent unto them should be had in derision and reproach and trodden underfoot. Everybody that agreed to the terms of Esau, Edom, and his di diabolical plan of the New World Order, they're going to be in derision. They're going to be in confusion and had in reproach. Ill speakings against them. It says, for there should be in every place in the next city a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. They should be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. For they should waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. That's what that's what the Heavenly Father have planned to come. These people are finna get judged. That that that's what it is. It's judgment. But the thing about what the Lord is doing is that He's not gonna take away His elect out of the midst of judgment, but He's just gonna save and deliver them out of the midst of the judgment. We're going to be right in the midst of it. But a lot of people, they're going to be getting took out of their houses. Their houses, they didn't paid off. And you know what I mean? They didn't pay this house off and they didn't decorate it the hell out their house. It's going to be all destroyed in moments. They're going to be getting hauled off to concentration camps. You know, they ain't going to know what's going on. They're going to be in derision. What's going on? Anybody can tell me what's going on. Why are they doing this? I'm a United States citizen. I pay my taxes. You know how spoiled Americans are. But they're going to be finding out the hard way. They're going to be finding out the hard way, y'all. All right? But we going to know what's going on. We're going to know. Okay? We're going to know. And the Lord going to be with us. Matter of fact, this is um, Proverbs 3 and 25. It says, be not afraid. There go that word afraid again. What time we are afraid. Remember on the title? Well, Proverbs 23 and 25 says, be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. So the scripture told us, be not afraid. We got to fight against that fleshly emotion of worrying or thinking that the Heavenly Father ain't going to be there we got to fight against it, man, every day. And we got to encourage each other to fight against it, man. Fuck being afraid. You got to tell yourself that, man. You know, let the spirit of y'all by Shemel Shai embody you to have confidence and to believe. It said, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. So he saw when he come, um, um, he going to come hard. We know he going to be trying to scare the crap out of everybody. To scare them into subjection. But the Lord said, be not afraid. It says, for the Lord is thy confidence. And shall keep thy foot from being taken. The Lord is with us. He's going to keep our foot from being taken. And your foot, that's a that's parabolic talk of anywhere you go. Because your feet take you anywhere you go. 
Anywhere you go, the Lord's going to be a confidence. And he's going to be keeping you from being taken. Matter of fact, look at the precept in Psalms 91. Verse 10, it says, There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. And they shall bear thee up in, the, in, up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. You see the word foot being used in Psalm 91 and foot being used in Proverbs 3. You see the correlation between the two verses. The Lord going to be thy confidence. The Lord going to give his angels charge over us to keep us. He going to keep our foot from being taken. He going he, he's not going to allow our foot to be dashed against the stone. These two verses complement each other. And this is what we believe. You know? This is what we truly believe. This is what we have to believe. All right? Because there's no other way out of this. The evil day is coming. You know, a lot of death, sorrow, pain, and judgment is coming. But a lot of mercy, all right, deliverance, power, you know, is coming as well. Both is coming at the same time. We just want to be caught on the good side. We want to be caught on the side of deliverance and mercy. You know, the love of the Heavenly Father. You see? So let's go right here. Let's jump back to the book of 2nd Edges 16 real quick. And we're going to start capping this off. 2nd Edges 16 and 54, 52 through 54. And then I'm going to read 62 through 67. It says, for yet a little while. I'm sorry. For yet a little. And iniquity should be a taken, taken away from the earth. And righteousness shall reign among you. So that's that's what truly the judgment day um, concludes to. The end goal of judgment day is that iniquity is going to be taken away from the earth. The heavenly father is going to purge iniquity. All right. And it says and the righteous shall reign among you and he's going to be preserving righteousness. So so if you have a righteous spirit, you will be preserved. But if you have a, a, a spirit of iniquity, you're going to be taken away. So purging is coming truly, brothers. It says, let not the sinner say that he have not sinned. For the heavenly father shall burn coals of fire upon his head. Which saith before the Lord power and his glory. <clears throat> sorry, let me go back. I'm sorry. It says, which said before the Lord power and his glory, I have not sinned. Behold, the Lord knows all the works of men, their imagination, their thoughts, and their hearts. Verse 62. Yea, the spirit of the almighty power which made all things in search of all hidden things in the secrets of the earth. Surely he knoweth your inventions and what ye think in your hearts, even them that sin and will hide their sin. Therefore, have the Lord exactly searched out all your works and he will put you all to shame. And when your sins are brought forth, you should be ashamed before man and your own sins should be your accusers in that day. What will you do? How will you hide your sins before the heavenly father and his angels? Behold, Yahweh Bashem Shai is the judge. Fear him. Leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities to meddle no more with them forever. So shall the heavenly father lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. You see that right there? The beautifulness of that, of these verses I just read. The Lord knows everything everybody's doing in this earth. Everything, all the wickedness that they're doing. And he's, he's, he's tallying it all up and he's getting ready to put the, the, the wicked right into judgment. You will not be able to hide anything you, you've been doing. So, so brethren, if the Lord knows all the wickedness that these people are doing, and he's reserving them to judgment, how much more the, the ones who repented and actually start living their life to the best of their ability by the Heavenly Father, showing fear, faith, brotherly love. When nobody is around, they, they, they living up to the scriptures. They remembering the ways of their forefathers and doing that which is right 
at all times, regardless. Sincere, pure in their hearts. They, they truly love their Heavenly Father. The Lord knows those ones too. And like he said, so shall the Heavenly Father lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. He's going to be delivering those spirits from all trouble. All trouble. And you will be into the chariots looking at the world be destroyed in nuclear destruction and, and at the end of World War III, seeing the Edomites' kingdom go down. We have to believe these things, brothers, and not allow the, the, the spirit of, of fear to take us. Right? Not allowing the spirit of fear and uh, non-belief cause us to make our own decisions. No, we, our decision is, your decision should be made up in the Lord. All right? Your decision should be made up in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Okay? Matter of fact, let's go to 1 Thessalonians because this is not for the, this day that's coming is not for the righteous, it's for the wicked. We have to remember that. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 8, it says, But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for in helmet the hope of salvation. For the heavenly Father have not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. There we go. Our job is to, to, to be faithful, put on faith, believe in the salvation. Be sober, living to the best of your ability out here. And, and, and by believing in Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, our Lord and Savior, as it is as, as it is said, you'll be delivered. You will obtain salvation. You see? But uh the wicked is appointed to wrath. Matter of fact, 2 Peter 2 and 9. Precepts that very well. It says the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. You see? <laughs> so the Lord is he's he's doing a lot of preserving. Now you could be preserved for the wrath or you could be preserved for the salvation. It depends on your works, and of course it depends on if you're the elect first. But the elect will have works, righteous works, by faith and by actions. So yeah, man, through the spirit and power, y'all by Shemel Shai pretty much tagged everything that um, the spirit of the Lord had me uh, thinking upon. And I pray that I was edifying and uplifting to uh, you brothers and sisters out there that to... To understand what time we are afraid, we would trust in Yahweh Shem El Shai. When that evil day come, we trust in Yahweh Shem El Shai. That's all we could do. So I hope that was encouraging to you, and it, and it motivated you to 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 keep believing. All praises to Yahweh by Shem El Shai, Brakta Yahweh, Brakta El Shai, Brakta Yahweh, and Brakta El Shai. Shalom, I keep step. Shalom.